What's up, y'all? It's the number one co-signer, Don Cannon, and this is Backtrack Special Edition. We're out here in Van Nuys, California. We are here at Spaceship Recordings, and we're getting with my man, my guy Mars, from 1500 Nothing. Check us out. You know what it is, Backtrack. Long story short. What's that? My guy. <laughs> hey, you hear me? What up, fuck? What's that? You good? Wazam! Welcome to the that, Welcome to the <laughs> Welcome to the spaceship, man. Spaceship Studios, man. This is I mean. I'm highly, I'm highly disappointed. This is my first time here. I'm oh, happy man. that I'm here for the first time. That you know, makes sense. Timing, timing is everything. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Love, love. Yeah. Let's get into some shit. We just arrived at Spaceship Recordings. I'm here with my guy Mars, a legend, sitting next to me. I know I always say I'm not the goat. I'm the number one co-signer. Definitely He's the legend. Though. What are you? The goat, just like you. Oh, he's the goat. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> go with like the goat. You. <laughs> we're gonna go with the goat. My guy. Yeah, one of my closest friends, man. Uh, right. We met 2007. Uh, obviously doing music, and uh, we just formed a bond ever since. Um, so it was yes, only sir. right that I came here to check you out. I feel like your talent speaks beyond moons and Marses and you know different things and. Uh, the appreciation level, which people say flowers. I'm not here to give you flowers. I'm here to yeah, give they you die. big ups. You yeah, know what I'm mean, saying? Appreciate that, and, man. Uh, you got a lot of skin in the game, and I just wanted to let people know that you are a legend to me. And there's a lot of people out here that's probably like, oh my God, he finally got him on the show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I appreciate that, for real. Uh, Telling yeah. people about yourself, um, your background, and and you know your, your big inspirations, you know, getting into music. My name is Lamar Edwards, AKA my guy Mars, musician, producer, artist, DJ, innovator. My background was, you know, church. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather yeah. had a church on Florence and Avalon out here in East Los Angeles. As far as I can remember, I remember growing up in that church, just being around the drums, being around the organ. Yeah. My dad had a record label and he named it after me, Lamar Records, when I was like four years old. Fire. So he was already writing and, and singing and recording. And then once he started um, pastoring, by that time I was like maybe like nine or 10 and he moved us to Lancaster. That's when I started like playing drums and you know, playing for the church and playing the organ. So my whole background was just like learning how to be a great musician because you know, my dad had all the greats and was friends <laughs> with Thomas Whitfield, John P. Key, Marvin, wow. you know what I'm saying? All the, the whinings commission. Wow. So it was like, I just had the luxury of, you know, having these people around. So. I think my musical IQ was developed early and I was exposed to a lot early. So that was, you know, very advantageous and a blessing. But that's how I like, you know, got into just doing music in general. The production didn't really come until after I heard Jay Dilla, because I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't listen to anything other than gospel music. My dad being a bishop, so when I went to school or you know what I'm saying, when they out and I could snuck and look at BT jams or whatever, you know, that was the only way I could hear hip hop, R&B, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I was real late to a lot of things, but I remember being in high school and hearing We Can Freak It and hearing Find My Way. Find My Way, yep. Those two records changed my life. So I was like, you know, me and my, shout out to my cousin Swift, uh, Swift D, we would like go to Walmart and be listening to the snippets of the albums because we didn't have enough money to play, pay for them and we couldn't buy it, you yeah, know, because our yeah. parents would trip. So that's how we would like kind of like get our fix and like I wanted to basically make people feel how I felt when I heard that music. I'm like, who is doing this? Like, who is like, this is is this? Can you do this? It's different. Like, you know it's what I'm saying? Like, feeling, he's breaking yeah. the rules. Like, you can't put church with hip hop and soul. Right. And, right. So I think you know just having the uh, the exposure, you know what I'm saying, and also being limited, you know what I'm saying. I was grounded and kind of kept. You know what I'm saying? In the church. So I, I I thank God for that. At first I was kind of like, you know, just rebellious. Like I've been in church. I'm about to go do everything, <laughs> smoke, drink, do everything that, that my dad said I could right, do. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you, you find out that, you know, a lot of stuff that don't feel good to you is good for you. That was kind of like the upbringing musical background part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you mentioned church and then, you know, we did Mike and Keys on this trip mm -hmm. and some guys that you're close with. Yes, sir. And they mentioned church as well. What influence do you think that has on moving musicians coming from the church going into the game? Do you think that's a big influence of the game? I think it's, I mean, it's an important foundation. And uh, like I said, depending on what type of church, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, the churches that we go to, you know what I'm saying? Like it has good music, you know, praise and worship, live band, right. you got a choir, you know what I'm saying? 
you get the good message, you know what I'm saying? And it's networking. So like essentially it's just one production where you learning how to be professional. Yeah, you know what I'm facts. saying? Yep. You get to go sing your first song, you get, you know, nervous, you get over stage fright. <laughs> My dad told me to play the organ the first day we got the organ donated and I didn't know how to play the organ. I was sweating bullets, bro. And he like <laughs> talking me out, like play E flat, which is way, which is more embarrassing because right. you showing me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like things like that that you go through to where fast forward, I'm on stage with David Banner and he like, yo, my homeboy Mars want to sing something to y'all. Nigga, we did not, we, we didn't rehearse this. Facts. So, but I'm Facts. used to the church foundation of just, you know, anything can happen or you move with the spirit, you move with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of that is like an asset moving into the music business because you have foundation, you have music theory. You learn all of those things, whether you know you're learning it or not. You know That's what I'm true. saying? That's so, true. You know yeah, and shout out to everybody that came from the church. Zaytoven is one of them. He still actually is playing in the church. You right. Know, I mean, to this day, you got, you know, Jay White. He's in I Dallas. was too, man. I got fired, but, you know. <laughs> How you get fired for the church, man? I, had, I was doing tours and, you know, I yeah, was doing They needed somebody so like, hey, that's going to be there and yeah, be a little man, bit more I, consistent. Like I'm, I got a residency with Ti at Dre's. <laughs> <laughs> They're like secular, <laughs> right? <laughs> Fired. <laughs> Let so the I church did. say amen, amen, man. Amen. You know what I mean? As we moving on, um, coming out of church, your first placement, and what was that? Like as far as like major? Yeah. Well, major or something that you hold in your back pocket is I made it. Like I know my made it. Uh, everybody thinks Go Crazy was my made it or my aha moment. It really wasn't. I had some joints I had already did for T.I., some joints I had already did for Ludacris that was like, okay, I'm on to something. Right, right, my right. first major placement was like, okay, I'm supposed to be here. God, gotcha. God gave me a check and I know I'm supposed to be doing this. What was your aha moment? To be honest, it was like two different periods because I had just came from the church. So it was an independent play, but it solidified what I was doing. Yeah. Cause I never thought to even produce for people. I was just making music. Right. So somebody was like, yo, you should let people hear your music. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. <laughs> and then somebody like, yo, I want to buy this for it. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should start, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, is there any other artists out there? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so I think that was like the first kind of like placement that solidified me on an independent scale was just this group called Formula One. Billy Moss uh, had gave me a check, my first check. Dope. But outside of that, I think like either Bobby Valentino or or Tip, like I can't help it because that was like not only the first production that I was like more hands on with, but it was like the first relationship that, you know, was built from the ground up as Dope. well as the music. You know Dope. what I'm saying? When you met Tip, that was in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. When we were coming up, we always were saying, yo, go to California, go to New York. You came to Atlanta, which is one, you know, L.A. is one of the meccas for music right. and musicians. You came to Atlanta and established new relationships. What was going through your mind that made you want to go to Atlanta <laughs> after leaving the West Coast and all these people? You got Quick, you got DJ, you know. I remember you was like, you got Dr. Dre. Why are like, you here? You're in Atlanta, and I'm like, I'm trying to get to LA. What made you say, light bulb, I'm going to go to Atlanta? One, to develop the relationship with Tip. Okay. I already knew you, Polo, Drummer Boy. It was a few people that I knew that I was talking to that I either you know, had met or we were already going to work. So when Tip was like, yo, let's start a production company together, it just made sense for me to move out there to develop a real like bond with him. Cause I never like, what people don't know is like, I did never know Tip. I knew what you know about that. You could like listen that to literally him. was the only song I knew. You know, he was tripping. Cause he like, bro, yeah, you remember on da 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 da? And I'm like, what's that? He like, <laughs> he was like, you ain't heard trap music? Like you ain't heard, like the first time I heard trap music, he forgot that he drove his uh, Range Rover and Lil Mama pulled up in the Bentley and, and he was like, all right, I'm gonna drive home. He like, Mars, drive the Range Rover home. The shot or somebody just had the CD in there. Yeah, that was the true. first time I heard it. Like at that point it was like almost six, seven years old. You know what I'm saying? So I think like developing that organic relationship was my thought process. And I also was seeing what was going on in Atlanta. It was just like people just worked with each other more yeah. than people out here. You know what I'm saying? And I, that was something that I seen. And just like we was working, like we would just be jam sessions. Yeah, just I working. Just and just, I was just talking about just this. Just having fun, like, bro. Yeah. And it's like just because we haven't, we're not even thinking about what artists, none of that. But we was getting placements on accident is how I was looking at it. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. We wasn't really even being intentional at that time. We wasn't. But we was being sessions. intentional with what we were doing. Yeah. You know jam, what I'm saying? Jam sessions. <laughs> you know I mean? so, jam sessions for years. Yeah, facts. Yeah. So but yeah, so you know, I think that I, was a thought process. Of, I, get, I always get this, I always get this feeling like, man, where did we collide the South and the West Coast sound? 
Like as like when we were working, like you was bringing a whole nother sound. I was right. bringing a whole nother sound. Right. How did we collide those two things to have like a two chains want to rap on the beat or a game or, you know, you know, the numerous artists. CJ was one of the guys that we right. did a record Facts. for. You know what I'm saying? It, it was just like it was a, it was a different type of explosion coming out of. You know, and these are all records too. They're not just I like, know. Uh, like if they you go back records. and listen to them now, you're like, yo, this is crazy. They all records. No facts. Uh, I don't I don't I think I mean I think the energy is important. Yeah. And that's why like that's what I try to tell artists nowadays, even with producers, like music isn't as best as it can be right now because there's not a lot of real like interaction. Right. And like real producing. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like I've seen you in the section telling the artist like nah or telling somebody else that like hey change it or telling me for that ma that matter like I know all the chords in the world and you telling me like nah just, nah not that or this or that and you, it takes a certain that. amount of you know you trusting whoever you working with allowing the ego to be the the song to be the biggest ego and it's like this then that that way everything works mm -hmm. I feel like when people bring that ego it's like oh this person telling me what to oh no nah, we should just do this and do this like. Music is subjective anyway. I'd rather do your idea and we'd be wrong. So I could be like, all right, can we try mine the next time? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if that's what it come down to, but it's like, that's, that's in working, the back of my that's head. Working, because I ain't, even yep. work, I ain't even worried about that because I yeah. trust whoever I'm working with. So I've been blessed enough to only work with my friends my whole life. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's true. And I that's think true. that's, that's like thing. the blessing. And also it's like, you can tell in the music. Moving into your catalog, uh, your contribution is unprecedented. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love. What were some of your first reactions to hearing yourself on the radio and hearing yourself be a part of records that became some of the biggest records of decades? I always wanted to know, like I always ask people, what's the feeling that you got? I know when I first did Go Crazy and Jay-Z was on it, uh, the first time I actually got to hear it, hear it was at a summer jam joint they do in Atlanta called Birthday Bash. Yeah. And Birthday right. Bash, Jeezy brought out Jay-Z and I remember Fighting out the tears, like you know. That was the it, first time you heard it, bro. Like, like I mean, like I, heard it, heard it out. Yeah. yeah, and it was just like, I was like, oh shit, I really made it. <laughs> like I was like tears, and they was looking at me like, yo, they play your shit. How you feel? I'm like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm alright, I'm alright. I mean, you know how you get in a fight, you be like, no, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I, I, I always want to know, like, what was your first reaction? Like you cry, like I, you know, I recently just won my first two Grammys. I've been nominated. Yeah, so many congratulations! Times, right? I ain't even been able and to tell you too. The, fu the fucked up thing was, I was going to get a bagel. It was raining hard, and people was calling my phone. Nigga, you won! You won! You won! I was crying. I'm grown and shit. I'm 44 years old. I'm on my like, large mount crying. That's <laughs> I'm fire. Out here. That's fire. You know, so man. I always want to know like how that feeling was. I mean, of course you got Grammys. What were those feelings like? Like that feels better than what having a gazillion dollars in a bank account. You know, at the moment, how's it feel? I think it was show me what you got. Woo! And it was, I remember, I remember being at um, Thrifty's or Rite Aid, right before, right across the street from the Hollywood Palladium. I was going in there to get some ice cream. I don't know why, because I don't even really. That's like some back in the like. I don't even go to Thrifty's <laughs> to get ice cream no more. I don't know, but I remember going in there to get ice cream, bro. And I got out the car and I didn't make it in to the store. Like Just Blaze called me, like, "Yo, Jay, like, listen to this." And I'm just hearing like. I, it's muffled, but I was like loud. I'm just hearing, Jay, I am the mic recording. You might have to go back and record. I'm like, he's like, yo, this is going on the album. This is crazy. Boom, boom. Just calling me. I'm like, wait, what's going on? Like, what? <laughs> what's going on? You know on? what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yo, I'm going to call you back. You just messed me up. I was just sitting there like. And Thrifty's like, yo. I didn't even walk in. I'm getting <laughs> off the car. I'm like, I got right back in the car. I'm like, yo, when we roll up. This is crazy. And then I have Jess call me and tell me, like, Yo, we did, like, we did a song with Jay-Z. Like, Jay-Z got on, you know what I'm saying? Legend, legend. Then you start hearing it on the Budweiser commercial. You know what I'm saying? I told my dad, you know, he a pastor. So funny, funny quick story is like all my first placements was all like jacked up names. Like, which one of you bees like me? <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? I can't go and be like, yo, dad, I got a song with Snoop. All right, what is it called? Which one of you bees like me? Like, you know yo. what I'm saying? You can't be proud of that. So Crazy. it was like, I was proud, but it was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I feel like Show Me What You Got was one of the first songs I I felt like, hey, yo, dad, like, I got a song with Jay-Z. He's like, oh, that's cool. He heard the Budweiser commercial. I came out there in Lancaster. Dog, y'all make some noise for my son. He he, he got a song with Jay-Z. <laughs> he was able to say, show me what you got. Yeah, yeah. Everybody say amen. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm trying to tell y'all. God trying to show you what he got. It's untitled. You don't want to hear the title, but my son is doing his thing. 
So, you know, those moments is like, okay, your family with you, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You, yeah. uh, I think that was probably like the first song and remembering like how I felt. This is a special edition and normally uh, we go to the original place where the person creates it. We go through the original vibe. Um, the, one, of the, one of the hurdles that we've been going through was some of these places, these legendary places aren't around anymore. Right. You had like some hit factories in New York. You got some studios. Uh, that were in Miami, they're mm -hmm. no longer there. The but, Edmonds Tower out here, right? And, such, and, mm -hmm. and I don't want to, I don't want to spoil this special edition by telling them what you did. So we're gonna open up the screen, and you're gonna play some stuff, and we're gonna talk about each joint that you had a contribution to. Got you. You know what I'm saying? And then we're gonna move from there. Easy call. All right, this is easy. <laughs> made you play those keys <laughs> <laughs> i know what it is but what made you play those keys <laughs> honestly uh was it the weed guy yeah, was it the yeah i mean i'm I, bro you know, as you know we always download information from god facts like we just facts. do what we feel facts but um yeah i there was no smoking in that studio so i had to go outside wow while I was smoking, I just heard the melody the whole time. I just kept hearing the melody. Why was it no smoking in that studio? I think because it was so many movie stars and people that was, you know, it was at the underdogs. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they got Eddie Murphy, Jennifer Hudson one day, next yeah. day Justin Bieber, next yeah, day Chris Brown. This young Chris Brown, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so they like, nah, we're going to keep this clean and professional. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Y'all do that. Young Chris Brown. We're doing these keys. Did you finish the beat on the spot? Did you, you know... Uh, it, first of all, the song is "Take You Down" Take by you Chris down. Brown. Chris Brown. Yeah. Is that something that you fully produced out? Uh, you contributed I, to. I like to say I produced and um, arranged, like, wrote the initial idea. Okay, dope. So the first part was me just doing the idea. So just like I'm playing the chords, Damon comes in while I because I did the drums first, so I had the drums and literally just the rolls. Right. And. He, Damon comes in, he like, yo, what's that? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. He like, that's going on Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and he just closed the door and I'm like. That's fire. Okay. Shout out to Damon. Yeah, so shout out to my guy. But they had me learning Logic. I didn't really know Logic. Yep. So when I got to. <laughs> the reason why I did that was because I didn't know how to make it stop. Right. Oh, that makes sense. So what, did MIDI, you what did you come from? Well, just a regular piano, NPC? Well, yeah, like, at the time I was, yeah, okay. NPC, 3000, okay. Okay. all the instruments, like analog keyboards. Okay. Like how we used to jam. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if it's a if it's a beat machine, I could produce a full idea with the NPC, the keyboard, you know, whatever. Got you. They just had computer, keyboard gotcha. in every room. And they're like, if you're going to work here, you got to learn logic. When you when you were making the drums and playing the keys, did you dive off into like some EQs and stuff like that, or you just left it raw? I I didn't I didn't know I didn't, didn't even know really it, know that literally was like my first placement in Logic, but that was like probably like my first week in Logic. Obviously, hence to the mistake that people don't know is a mistake. And then they I go, always talk about the mistakes. That's the magic. The like that whole. Mm, oh. Like, that's because I didn't know how to stop the message. Wow. And I didn't want to bother them to be like, yo, teach me how to. Wow. So I just owned it. Like, you wow. know what I'm saying? And then paste everything after four bars and just let it go. Wow. Let the, let the, the magic lives <laughs> on. The magic lives on. So that's how that, you know, happened. And then the second part was Damon come back in the room probably an hour later. They take it in the, in the main room. Once they take it in the main room, it's a wrap. Right. So Harvey's, you know, Harvey and Damon is in there. They're writing to it, writing the song. After the hook. They did the bridge. So oh. he produced the bridge and wrote the bridge. And then after, and, you, and when you hear it and go back to, and listen to it, you'll be able to hear like, okay, yeah. the step one and step two does sound a little different than, you know what I'm saying? Even as the bass is like, just the bass. If you listen to the bass on the bridge, it's like very on. Yeah. And then when you get to the hook, it's like real West Coast. Like, exactly. it's like a slow down West Drag Coast drums. battle cat. Like, you know Drag what I'm saying? Drag drums. Drag so, drums. Shout out to battle cat. Shout out to all my West Coast, Coast influences. That was a great record. Second idea. Let's see what Second we got. idea. Speaking of, this is a very great segue. A lot of my favorite records, I grew enough and had a lot of 
um, experiences with watching other producers like yourself, Battle Cat, even artists like Snoop and, you know, JTI, they know when to insert themselves to, right. you know, for the music. That was one thing that I had to learn is like, you don't have to put something on everything. Right. And like, you know, one of my biggest songs is one of these songs where I did the least amount of work. Literally what I'm about to play is what I what I did. So I don't know if you're going to be able to guess this, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let me see. That's a classic. What song is this? <laughs> <laughs> Dedication. Dedication. <laughs> Rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. Yes, sir. Rest in peace, how, my bro. How did that come about? How I was a part of that record. Mike is like, yo, Mars, you have to do something because, you know, we ain't mixing at this point. So, as you know, Victory Lab went through so many different transitions. So, Word. we had mixing and um, Mike is like, yo, this, this song just needs something. And I'm like, bro, it's perfect. It doesn't need nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yo, I just like, just do something, bro. Like put some type of Mars chords, a sound, something. And I'm like, all right, let me hear it again. So they played it again. And I'm like, now I'm listening to see if I can, you know, hear something that won't get in the way of the song. Right. And like everything I'm hearing, I'm like, nah, I don't need it. So he like, ah. so he like, what about the outro? <laughs> and I literally was thinking that, but I didn't want to say nothing. You know, I want to leave it alone. Yeah, man. I'm like, it's all alone. good. And he like, he like, bro, the 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 end where he just like dedication, like you like, just play something right there. I'm like, all right, cool. What you hear is literally what I played, and then that was that was just it. And, and you had a you had a relationship with Nipsey prior to that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and y'all were y'all were really tight. Y'all had a y'all had a real bond. I, I I remember him always mentioning your name and mentioning Lawrence's name and even Mike and Keys and mm -hmm. Futuristics. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Right, facts. Um, facts. Them being a go to, even when he came to Atlanta and he was at our studio for some months just recording, mm -hmm. um, he always felt like he was just in a space where he's like, I need my guys yeah, here. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Whether I'm starting on an idea here, I need them here. To flesh this, they, like he grew with y'all. You Facts. know what I mean? Like Facts. he trusted y'all, and and that's a lot for artists. A lot of artists don't sit there and say, "Y'all do y'all thing." And whatever y'all like, I like. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And Absolutely. I, and I rock. And that's one of the things I really appreciated about him. He's like, "Bro, you do you." You know what I mean? No nah, facts. If you believe in it, I believe in it. You know? No, what that's I'm real. And I think that speaks a lot about what type of artist he was because he valued the production so much. Yeah. And um, I'll give y'all a. You know, this is a golden nugget. Like, I ain't never even said this ever um, outside of, like, just talking to the homies. But, like, our first 1500 or nothing meeting ever, Nipsey was the only rapper there. Wow. 1500 was, you know, just us, the band, and, you know, some producers. We had Battle Cat, Jelly Roll, people that we looked up to. We invited them and, you know what I'm saying, see how we can learn game and how we can, you know what I'm saying, work together and figure that out. Wow. Was that... Uh, Lorenz mom's uh, career, rest in peace. And Nipsey was the only rapper there, bro. And he was smart enough to come pull up wow. to see all the best producers wow. in the same place, make sure he got all their numbers and networked with everybody and made everybody feel like they, he like, this is my team. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? So like everything, that's why when he say like, yo, all my music came from 1500, all my music came through Rans, Mars, bro, DJ, you know what I'm saying? That was like a real thing because he was studying us Right. Early. Like, right. he was coming up, pulling up to the studio. I was like, y'all niggas is going to the Grammys. Y'all niggas is getting plaques. Like, what are y'all niggas doing? Like, I'm about to just come sit in the studio. Sponge. So I think, like, that's important because a lot of people see the story, but they don't know, like, what's behind the story. Yeah. So I always, like, you know, advocate that part for Nip, like, to encourage artists to really, like, if you want to be a great artist, you have to develop a sound. And the only way you could develop a sound is by having a producer or a group of producers that you trust. And Nip was really, like, a student you know what i'm saying he studied jay and really? he knew jay had his main three four producers it's gonna be timbaland for real you know bink whatever you know yep. just like yep. you know what i'm saying that's the sound snoop dr dre is gonna be you know for real yep. you know what i'm saying like it's yep. three four people that's yep. the sound like 1500 is that's the sound so all of these major artists that have had 10 year plus success you know what i'm saying and longevity is because they have 
producers that evolve their sound and create sounds for them. One thousand. So that's something that I want to, you know, keep advocating and uh, allow people to, you know, what I'm saying, see that part of Nip and not just, you know, yeah, the marathon continues in that way. Real. Like pick up what he was doing and be able to Im implement it and apply it to your own music. You know what I'm saying? Real. Yeah. Shout out to Nip. Let's yes, move sir. to the next idea. Like, the song has a very nice story. And I'm going to just go straight to the chords and then I think you'll be able to guess this. Let me see here. <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> masterpiece <laughs> masterpiece the development of that you were part there bruh what do you think about this and what song is this because i know what it is not nah, 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 that that don't kill me whatever make, make me stronger, stronger. hard bro stronger the only diamond song that kanye west has <laughs> thank you jesus and thank you kanye let the church say amen. Amen. Um, that experience was really crazy. Shout out to DJ Reflex. Um, Reflex had told Ye about me, and you know I was kind of already around, being around with Joy and working with Joy and stuff. But specifically, he called me to pull up this day to see how we could work. Reflex told him I play keys and you know musician, produce whatever. I go in the studio and I'm hearing all the way down the hall like techno music to me. Right. Because I've never heard Daft Punk or I don't know what's going on. Right. I'm just. Right. So I'm like, I first was like, am I walking in the right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I walk in the session. He like, he in there doing like, he really just going through the record, just listening to the record. And I'm like, he like, oh, what's up? What, what kind of keyboard? Tell him what kind of keyboard you want. Like, what's up, Mars? Tell him what time. Hey, give Mars a keyboard, whatever keyboard he want. All right, boom. So he listening to the record and I'm like, he's tripping. Cause I'm like, what are, what am I doing here? Like, so I go out, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, ease my mind, come back in here, come back in the studio. Like he's chopping up the sample and I'm watching him make the whole beat. And it's literally me and him and the engineer is like walking in and out. And I'm like, this is crazy. Cause I like seeing how he did every single thing. Right. So I'm like looking and I'm like, okay, then I'm, I'm now I'm so intrigued by what he doing. I forgot I'm there to even be there for him. You know what I'm saying? I forgot I was Mars. I'm like watching him like, what is going on? I got called. You feel me? <laughs> well, he like get to, by the time he gets to the beat, boom, boom, boom. And he like, yo, I want to, I want to make the snare sound like um, that Tupac song, Ambitious of a, of a Rider. Right. So he listening to that and like referencing like, take an open hi-hat. That's, That's when I was wild. like, what is going on? Like, why that would you even think that? I never that even thought about that. That snare is an open hi-hat. I never told nobody that, and I'm not going to tell you say too much. crazy. But you're my guy, so I got to give the gems. Wow, here, wow, bro. wow. I never knew that. Open hi-hat, bro. And then he put the Sans app. That's when I learned about Sans app. This was before people was really Sans using app, it. Sans yep. So he got the beat going, and he, like, look over. He, like, Mars, you hear something? And I'm like... <laughs> Oh shit, I'm Mars. <laughs> I forgot I was here. talking to me. Like, I'm, you know a, what I'm, I'm, I'm fanning. I don't like, know what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I hear something. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it just so happened that what he was doing is like going back to the foundation, bro. Like yeah. that's literally church chords. Like, yeah. Like that, 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 that don't kill you. They gonna let you make you stronger. I need you to go you up now. I'm not can't wait no more. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. You can just... That's so much history right there, bro. So it's OD, bro. Like, just being a part of that, you know what I'm saying, was a blessing. And being able to watch watch him create, that changed my whole, like, you know, the way that I just approach things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a fire session, bro. That was probably one of the best sessions and most informative sessions, too. Because he was just trying stuff, like... Yeah. You know what I mean? Just a kid painting. Facts. Yeah, that's dope. Got any other ideas? So I'm gonna just play, I'm gonna play this. This is this is crazy. So magical moment, <laughs> magical, magical moment with Mars. Right, so, <laughs> him, him. so <laughs> mm. <laughs> my bad. This is how we are. All That's the time. how we are. So um, boom. I'm uh, Ty calls me. Ty Dollar Sign. He like, yo, I want you to come listen to the album. You gotta be a part. Boom, boom, all this stuff. Fast forward. I pull up, listen to the album. He like, yo. You got an organ? He was like, you know somewhere that I got an organ? I'm like, I got an organ in my house. 
Like I got an organ, organ in the living room. Yeah. So he like, okay, boom, boom, boom. So he just started talking like like he didn't hear what I just said, right? So then later, they're working on this song, Seven's in the booth, singing the background. Mm. They're working on the song, and like again, like 15 minutes go by, and he like, man, boom, man, this would be crazy with some organ. He's like, yo, Mars, you don't know nobody with an organ? I'm like, bro, I told you I got an organ in my living room. I was like, hold on, watch this. It I just did, seemed hard to believe. I said, you bro, got watch, an organ in your living room. Bro, I said, watch this. I did this this morning. Watch this. And I played this, bro. I said, I did this this morning before I came here. I was just used to just wake up and just do stuff. Right. So I'm like singing. Like, you'll hear it on the next part. I'm doing the bass and the organ. I'm about to walk up out of here. So he like, yo, whoa, yo, 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 whoa, hold on, hold on. And he's like, bro, send me that. Like, can we just pitch that down one? That's like the same chords that we doing right now. So I pitched it down one, went to the same tempo, and literally how I became a part of this this song. Like I didn't even like this is how I'm a part of it, just by showing him. Like, yo, bro, I told you I got an organ, bro. Listen, <laughs> he's like, bro, wait, hold on, that's perfect, bro. Can you just can you just pitch that down? And... That's crazy. Knowing how to be a part of the records, it, it, sometimes people are like, yo, how was it when you was in the studio with Ty? Like. It was fire. He was asking me if I had an organ. <laughs> I told him, you was, don't believe me? Like, here, listen to this. I just did this two hours ago. Like, information. And being prepared, too, though. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, if I didn't have that to be able to, like, bro, trust me, it's at the house. I'm going to call you when I get to the house. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> that's a that's a whole missed opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Facts. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's just a blessing to be able to follow your real purpose and operating your purpose and, you know, like, just be blessed enough for these things to be able to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got to be prepared. You got to do the work. But at the same time, it's like, after you do so much work and, you know what I'm saying, manifesting and making sure that you're prepared, the opportunity is there. You just got to execute. I, I always wondered this because I know how I feel. But after making or being a part of so many hit records and knowing so many classic artists that have careers longer than two years they've been here 20 years mm -hmm. what drives you what drives you now the music the music always the music has always driven me i think the only thing that's made me like press the brake or pull the emergency brake or any of that or run out of gas is like not knowing the business enough to know how to handle the business and like not knowing the people that you do the business with enough to know how the people will That's be, right. you know what I'm saying? That's right. And you ain't gonna never really know somebody because they're gonna always evolve, but you can, you know, know traits. You can know things that, you know, character, and you know what I'm saying? Yep. So I think like, when it's just about the music, like you, like you said, we was doing jam sessions, but it was like that time in our life, we just felt like we was on top of the world because we was able to do what we wanted to do. And I felt like that's probably why we wasn't even thinking about artists is like the freedom to be able to create having the, the gift and the blessing to be able to create and the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? To be able to do it pretty well, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. So like, I think those things are like, you know, super, super dope, but understanding character, understanding how to be, understanding how to, you know what I'm saying? Like move and all of those things are things that you gotta learn in the music business, you know, as a producer or an artist or any type of creative in the music business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a couple of people before I finish my career that I want to sit in front of you, but I'm going to tell you after you tell me who are people you didn't work with that you need to work with before you're done with your musical career. Um, I like Tori Kelly a lot. Mm. Um, That's a good one. Missy, Stevie Wonder for sure, and um, maybe Dr. Dre. Mm. Mm. You know but you met Dr. Dre before. Yeah, I've met him, but... Never got a chance to work. Not work with him. I haven't worked with him yet. Yeah, so mine's is my two, even if I don't make music with them, but I get a, a chance to have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. One, you said Stevie Wonder and Quincy Jones. Those are two people that uh, I want to sit in the room again and just hear the stories uh, and pick up some notes. Uh, all of our stories as musicians become similar when you're in a room, but there are some people that solidify your growth in right. your life based Facts. on what you hear. Mm -hmm. um, so those are two people that, I always see in public. I saw Stevie. I never got a chance to, you know, speak to him. I seen Quincy. I've never got a chance to speak to him. But those two people, everybody else is kind of like somebody that uh, I either work with or talk to, or they gave me like 
the hats off, like, bro, you nice. Right. You know what I mean? And I feel like we need to do those before we get out of here. The facts. You know? Facts. Um, but really. yeah, man, it was a pleasure coming here, you know, spatial recordings. You know, I love to see this vintage equipment, you know what I mean? And and you still, you know, keep all these boards and, and still keep the grittiness in here, man. I would yeah. come in here and make a twenty pack. Yeah. <laughs> you, <Lex>. know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Set up, man. A DJ vibe, the drum. I ain't got no ASR, but yeah. No, I know you, we got Ableton, I think, somewhere around here. Yeah, this is surreal, man. I'm glad we had you on the show. I appreciate you, man. Uh, and this is and this is going to be the continuous, the special edition right here with my guy Mars, baby, Don Cannon, backtrack. Yes, sir.